Okay, Booker Tov, Purim Sameach. Um, today's staff is Yud Gimel. Okay, and uh, uh, so Daf Yud Gimel, we pick up at the bottom of Yud Bet Bet. And um, we're up to Hahu Gavra. So we are dealing with, here's the section of the Gemara where it deals with actual stories about people, marrying people, um, with the prime focus on the question of whether the thing was worth a shove of fruta. Um, although we just had an also interesting question that it was a point that it was done in the marketplace and that Rav would give lashes to that because that did not show serious, uh, you know, <coughs> seriousness in entering into uh, marriage. Okay, so now we're at Hu Gavra, about 10 lines from the bottom. Line starts with the word Gavra. Um, Hu Gavra, the Kaddish Betzif Asa. A man married a woman in a uh, mat made out of re, of uh, Hadas, a myrtle. Amrule, Bahale Space Shwe Pruta. It's not worth a Shwe Pruta, which shows you, by the way, that a Pruta, like we said, like nowadays a Pruta might be worth about two cents, but at that time it was probably closer to a dollar. Yeah. Even so, I mean, a math for, you know, I mean, you get a lot of stuff at the dollar store, but that's only because, you know, they mass produce things. When everything mm-hmm. is handmade, you wonder, like, what could he have gotten for a dollar? You know, a math? Anyway, what can I tell you? They said it doesn't have a Shara Pruta. So, these, so this is what they said to the man at the time. So Amr Lehu, he said back to them, whoever the them is. Anyway, he said back to the people, Tikadish Ba'arba Zuz Oh, it's okay. There's four Zuz. Remember, Zuz is a dinar, which is a hundred times, uh, two, uh, you know, almost 200 times a futa. It's okay. Let her get married with the four Zuz that are hidden in the mat. Okay, they're like in the weave of the mat. Um, so that's obviously like a thousand times, the, you know, futa. So um, Shakalta. The Ishtika. So she took, she, she sort of took the mat and she was tired. Okay, now apparently she had taken the mat, it's a little out of order, but apparently she had, had taken the mat before he had mentioned that there were four Zuz. So the quest, but she kept the mat. So the question is, right, is that is the fact that after she gave it to her, he gave it to her. So he only knowingly took possession of the mat. So she had four Zuz hidden in the mat, which belonged to him. Okay. But she sort of had like not knowingly taken possession of. And then he said, it's okay, I'll marry her with the four Zeus that are in the mat. And she just kept held on to the mat. Does that turn that into now an Masakidushin with the four Zuz? Okay. So I'm a Rava. It's being silent after the money changed hands. And any silence after the money changed hands doesn't count. Since it was not, so even though she's holding, now you could say, you know, he's holding on, she's holding on to it. He's saying that that's what it is, and she's not giving it back. But nevertheless, what I was saying, you know, the, 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 there's a difference between not giving something back and taking something. If I say, Haramu Kudeshasli, the Tabat Zo, and you take it, that, you know, s- signifies acceptance and agreement. If you, I gave you something, and you had in your pocket to say, I'm marrying you with the $10 that's in your pocket. So it's the absence of me putting my hand in my pocket and giving you back your ten dollars. You know, sort of the absence of of, of of throwing it away or returning it, right, is a is a different type of an act than the act of acceptance of it. So what was that? The fact that you're silent after the money is already given to you, and you know, and you're not so you know, and, you, and you're not rejecting it. That does not count as an act of kiddushin. Okay, so the whole shikus, any silence, the lachem at most after the money is already in your possession, meaning you don't own it, you haven't done a kinyan because you're not aware that it was in the mat. But nevertheless, you, you didn't do an acceptance of it, you just didn't do a rejection of it. So in that case, that doesn't count. So um, love temporary love temporary issue. What? It's a very contemporary yeah. issue in terms of college codes of sexual conduct. Oh, what do you mean? Right? Well, active consent. Oh, so, right. Do you have to say yes or do you just, or is it just only if you say no? That's an interesting great, point. Great, great. Yeah. You know, this comes up in halacha too because the question is a guy gives a ring to a woman and he, you know, sometimes this happens a lot under the chuppah. He says, right, like he'll first put the ring on the finger and he'll say, Haray at the Kudesh, I'll give about you after putting the ring on the so some folks can say, and then she doesn't say anything. Is that shkik alachem most? Because first he put the ring, and then he said, it. well, that's, that's obviously a little bit different, because there's like the immediately context, in the context, right. you know. Yeah, what are they doing? Well, that yeah. also, right. Okay, so the man says, I'm a rabba. You know, I mean a lot. Where I know this one, because I'm in the price. So, I'm a lot. Can't see start the seller's zog with the kadon. Here, take a hold of this cella. Remember what a cell is? That's like much, like a, or like a, you know, much more than a puta. It's about eight hundred times a puta. Anyway, take this cella as a uh, picata to watch for me. 
The Chaz of Ramallah, then after she had it in her pocket and she was thought she was watching for it, he said to her, he's Kachi Libo, you know what, Mar- get me, you know, you keep, keep the Selim and it should be Kes of Kiddushin. Marry me with it. But Shaz Matan Mos, if he said it when he gave her the Selim, the Kudeshes. Rachel Matan Mos, if he said it after he gave her the money, Radsta, if he agrees, Mikudeshes, Lo Radsta ain't Mikudeshes. If he doesn't agree, she's not. Now, the question here is, we, you know, it's always a question about the excluded middle. If she agrees, it's good. If she doesn't agree, it's not good. If she's silent, which is Rubba's question. Okay? So if says, my rutsta, my low rutsta. What does it mean, agree and not agree? Eli, my rutsta, the Amra in, she explicitly said yes after the, you know, money was in her pocket. Low rutsta, the Amra low. And if she said, if she doesn't want me, she explicitly said no. Michal to Reisha, the Amra low, now we have a huge says, But Rubba says, look, the beginning says that if, you know, it's contrasting. It says if it was at the time the money was given, he said, all right, look at Lee, then she's always married. But if it was afterwards, and then Lo Rutsta, she's not married. So it says, if Lo Rutsta means she said no, then it's exactly, that was exactly true also when at the time the money was given. If she said no, it wouldn't work. Right? We have to add contrast the case uh, that when, if the time it's given, it works, and, the time, and, and when he says it after it's given, it doesn't work. So if, if the case after it's given it doesn't work is only she actively says no, but that would mean silent that, that, that would mean that at the time it's given, she actively says no, it works. That's obviously not true. So uh, so am I not come low? She said no. Ella. So if we're contrasting the case when it's given and after it's given, the only case we could be contrasting that it works in one and not in the other is silence. Anything explicit would be the same in both. Ella. Ratsta, if she agrees, the Amra in, only if she says yes. Lo Ratsta, if she doesn't agree, that means the Ishtika, Mishtika, she's silent. I mean, the only thing <coughs> that could work in one and not work in the other is silence, because anything else is explicit, right? So, if she, so therefore, it would tell you if at the time it was given, she was silent, it works. If after it was given, she was silent, it doesn't work. And that proves my point. If you're silent after the money was given, and that does not constitute acceptance, that's not good. So, in, in, in this place, Punara, they, they, they raise a challenge of this in the name of Ravuna. Great Rabbi Yeshua. Me, dummy. Okay, you know what? You proved your point. In that case, silence does not count. But you can't compare that case to this case. Why? Hasam, because Pikadun Yavinu Nihala. Um, in that case, the money originally was given to her that she should watch it. She was a shonen. So if that's true, Savra, what are her choices then? You say, oh, after it's in the pocket, oh, if you accept it, you know, if, if you, uh, you know, let, let it be because of Kiddusha. So she thinks, what, 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 you know, what are you saying? Well, she was silent, that's acceptance. Why? Because what should she have done? She should have thrown it down. But she says she can't throw it down. She's a shomer. Okay, Sava, she thinks, if I throw it, and it breaks, I don't know how a fellow could break, but whatever it was, if it was an object, or gets lost, I'll have to pay. So therefore, you, silence, not, not taking it out of the pocket and throwing it back to you, is not a good indication of acceptance if she's a showman on the object. Because she has responsibilities to keep on holding on to the object. And you could say she could have said no, but okay, she also could have said yes. So, you know, silence, you can't interpret, you know, so, and so what you really get by the silence is the lack of returning of the object. Well, that doesn't mean anything. She's a showman. What? What do you mean this? Okay. So, um, so, okay. First, he gave her the mat. He has a whole framing of everything was Kiddushin. He gave her the mat and he said, I read the Kudesh at least, and she agreed to take the mat. And now the only problem was it didn't have a pruta, but there was four zoos in the mat. So in that case, silence is very reasonably interpreted as accepting the four zoos as Kesef Kedushin. The Isa de lo Nichola, and if she now has Jeff doesn't want the four zoos to be Kedushin, Nishtinu, throw it back to him. Okay, she's not obligated to watch it, throw it back to him. Okay, so Mar says, party. Everybody got the email that we started 715 today? Yeah, All right, fine. Right. All right. So, um, Oh, I know. I told him it's automatically locked. But you take the elevator. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Part of Ravachai. So Ravachai asked on this. Okay. So that's the distinction. That when it was given the Torah's Kiddush or whatever, when it wasn't Pichadon, when in general there was a Kiddush in context, silence is acceptance. If you don't want to accept it, throw it back. So part of Ravachai, Ravachai asked on this. Atu. 
who in the community can agree? What you think all women knows Allah? So Hakanami, Svara, she she you can also say, why is she not throwing it back? Because she thinks you should deal with who mystery. If I throw it back and it breaks, the Khaibina Bahra Yusa, I'll have to pay for it. I mean, I think that's funny the much just says women to own, you know, why women? You think they know the Allah? I mean, anybody normally, is that obvious to you? Somebody gives you something and then they and then you reject it. You say if I throw it back, I'll you know maybe I have to uh, you know uh, you know maybe uh, maybe I'll be liable, right? You know, so it's not obvious you can just throw something back and hey, I don't want it. So anyway, he says no. We can still say even in that case, silence can be interpreted. It doesn't. It should not be interpreted as accepting kesef, as accepting it as kedusha. Okay. Um, who who keeps the money in the, in the uh, case where it's hidden inside the mirror? Well, if it is, if, he, if we interpret it as an acceptance of it as kesef kedusha, she keeps it. But even if not, be a matana then, right? No, he only gave it to her as kedusha, and if she's not accepting it as kedusha, she gives it back. Okay, so that's why the Gemara says, let us throw it back. Okay, but so that's why I'm how to interpret her silence. So Shalcha Rav Hacha Bar Rav come into Ravina. He I got the Mai. So he sent this question to Ravina. What's the Halacha? Shalcha Anamo Shmiel on Had Ravuna Braid Rav Yoshua. We did not hear this tradition in the name of Ravuna, the son of Rav Yoshua, who said that there's a difference between Pikadon and this case. So we, I guess, presumably assumed that they were the same and that silence is not acceptance. But you who make this distinction, so Atun de Shmiel Luchu Chushula. You that make this distinction, you have to be concerned about it. And you have to be concerned that silence might be accepted. Okay, so according to them, they're basically saying, money was given originally, not as Kesef Kiddushin, although in the first case we started with, it was just hidden money. So it wasn't that it was knowingly given, but not in that context. It wasn't even knowingly given. But anyway, money's already in her possession. And then he says, and she doesn't throw it away, and she doesn't say anything. That's a Suffolk Kiddushin. And opposed to Rav, who says it's nothing. Yes. Is Rav Huna or Rav Yehoshua the Rav Huna? Or um, someone else? I think else? it's a different one. I, I just, a lot of the Amorite here are kind of obscure. Yeah. Okay, so that's a very important halachic question <coughs> about what do you call it? About Shtika la Achamat Mos. Yes. So the Lashon of La Shemil, etc., implies that in different localities the halacha was different. Yeah, I mean, you have this tradition, right? I mean, it's an interesting point because, you know, Rav, Rav Huna Braid Rav Yoshua did not pass in a halacha, he just raised a good basis for a distinction. Right. right, and if it's a good argument, and it shouldn't matter who says it or who heard it, right? But uh, presumably, what it means is 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 that you know you have a tradition that this is a substantive a substantive way of distinguishing yeah, between the cases. Yeah, it's not a, yeah, but it's meaning, not, but right, meaning it's a it's a middle place between just having heard an argument and having a tradition of a psaq. Right, you have a tradition that this is a a, a good basis for making the distinction. Right. Okay. We don't have that tradition, and we're, we're not so persuaded by the argument. Okay. Although I don't know, it seems a pretty persuasive argument to me. Well, I'm sorry. So okay. give me. No, we got. We got it. We're behind, and we only have. Two, I'm sorry. How he eats it all. The Havi Kamazma Varshechi. There was a woman who was selling Varshechi. What are Varshechi? So Raj basically it's like a bundle of like linen. Although if you look at the size, there's a whole range of different possibilities. Chavilos Meshi, Margolios, you know, which is you know gems. Ravenu Gershon Berish meets Nefet a hat. Okay, so she was selling something. Okay, also gave a chot of A man came and he grabbed one from her. Amrale, she said to him, "Havani Holly, give it back to me. It's mine." Amrale, he said to her, "Iavina lach mekudeshesli. If I give it back to you, will you be married to me with it?" Shakal tevi ishtika. She took it and she didn't say anything. She just took it back. He said, "Okay, I'll give it back to you if you'll be married with it to me." And then he handed it back. Great case. Okay, so Amr. So now, what's the halacha? Amr of Nachman, Yechol Lameimar, he can say in Shakli, but the Shakli, sure I took it, I just took my own thing back. You know, my, even though you said I ran the Kiddushatli and you gave it to me, and I didn't say no, okay, that does not, it's not acceptance of Kiddushin, it's my thing that you stole from me, I'm just taking my thing back. Okay, so, Eisvei Ravel, now of course the question you all should be asking is, who cares, it wasn't his to give, he didn't give her anything, so we're going to get to it. So. Yeah, okay, so we're going to see. So I'm Rav Nachman. You call, okay. Um, Anything Rav or Rav Nachman? Rav asked Rav Nachman. Um, um, we have a we have a bright job. He should be Gezel. Uber Hamas. He's married her with money that he that he stole. Um, or Hamas is basically he uh, persuade he he gave somebody money and took the object, but the person never agreed to sell him the object. So it's a form of Gezel. Uber Gneva, which is burglary. Um, or he grabbed it out of her hand. 
the Kitsha and gave it back to her to marry her. Mikudesha, she's married. Now, how could she be married with money that he doesn't own? So there are two scenarios. One is the second case, where it's her own money he's giving back to her. And the other is he stole it from somebody else. Now, of course, to us, I mean, both of them are absurd that he should be able to marry her. But I would, my gut would be the one that would be more absurd with money she stole from her. Okay? The Gemara later on actually says the reverse. Money, money he stole from other people, maybe logically it shouldn't work. If it works, it works on a principle, as Michael said, which is that like Yeyush is Kone, that you assume that the person he stole it from is Miyayish, gives up hope of ever getting it back, and then the Ganav takes possession of it, owns it. The Ganav has to reimburse the person for the cost, but the Ganav owns it. So one way of understanding why Gzela works is because we say Yeyush is Kone. Of course, if that's true, when he steals it from her, and she's standing right there, yeah, exactly. who yeah, says she's me, yeah, exactly. Anyway, okay, but then the Gemara basically, though, is inclined to say, Yeh, or whatever, it's a general debate, Yehush isn't Kona, and Gezel doesn't work when it's stolen from other people, and Gezel only works when it's stolen from her, and this entire bright would be talking about that it's stolen from her, and why would it work? Well, it would work because if he says, I ran the Kudesh at Lee, and she doesn't say anything, then what she's basically saying is, I agree to be Mekudesh to you with, that, with this money, and, and therefore implicitly, I agree to let you keep the money so that you can you. use it to be right. 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 So I'm Well, that's the most question. So we're going to see, in a case where you can presume she really does want to be married, which we're going to see in a minute, then you interpret it, then you say that she's allowing him to keep it, to marry her with it, and that's what it it's always important to serve relationship based on trust. Exactly. <laughs> so, oh my god. He, he's please. not now even a proof of one. We're talking about the right. idea of right. respect for marriage. Right. But if but if she's implicitly giving it to him and then he's giving it back, then you know, then for that moment he does own it. Uh, but you're right. Um, what I mean is he never gave anything. Anything of his own. Right. That's true. That is true. Okay. You know how they used to and there were some communities that the way they did communion was they had one ring that everybody always used, and it was like, you know, they had a ring. fancy ring. Yeah, it's got like this whole, like, this, this whole, like, 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 house you think, you think like a house, like it looks like you're or whatever. Anyway, they'd give it to the chassan to use for kibush, and he'd give it to the chassan, and they'd give it back. I never got that. Yeah. It didn't really belong in. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, but they, you know, it's like a matan of an aslahachsir type of thing, which works. We've seen that before. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it's right. bizarre, but right, but it does work. Bizarre. Okay, so, back to the Gemara. Okay, um, the Gemara says, ki, um, so, awesome. King, okay, a uh, little, little. Where were you? King sees. Uh, where am I? So how does that work? If you're saying that she could say shakli b'dish shakli, so the says hasam b'dish shadich. Okay, there was different. There, there was an engagement period beforehand. So they had already basically. It was clear they were planning on getting married. <laughs> oh, so they were already planning on getting married, and he grabbed it from her and he gave it back to her. Then we'll say from the context that's been for the last few months, we know she wants to get married to him. So we'll assume that therefore what she's doing, even though she's being silent, is she be allowing him to keep it so he can use it to marry. Okay. Whereas if he just goes up to a woman in the marketplace and steals her, steals something and gives it back, obviously that's she's just taking back her own thing. Okay. We not the name of the shani lan ben shadif below shadif. What do you know that makes sense? The tanya we've done the brisa. And Amalak kinsi seller zah shani chayav lichi. Take this uh, seller that I owe you. I owe you twenty bucks. Here's twenty bucks. Take it back. Okay. The chazer Amalak. Then he says, you know what? The twenty bucks I just gave you to pay off that debt is chad Why don't we use it as kesef kiddushin? So if he said it b'shas matan malus before he handed the money over. Then Rutsta Mikudesh, that's the Rutsta Mikudesh. If she agrees, it works. If not, it doesn't work. After the money we gave over, a few Rutsta in the Mikudesh, even if she says yes, it doesn't work. You know why? Because then the, the 20 bucks is now fully hers. It paid off the debt, right? So if he says, marry me with your own $20, and she says yes, then it doesn't work, okay? So so the mercy now, my Rutsta, my low Rutsta. What does it mean she agrees or doesn't? Elim or Ratzda, when it, at the time, Bishas Matmos, okay? If Ratzda means the Amr in, she says yes, it's supposed to be low Ratzda, the Amr low, she says no. Ha'ishtakam, presumably if she was silent, Havi Kiddushin, that's really our question. If, she, if she's silent, it is Kiddushin, when he says, here's $20, Hareya Mekudashasli. So what would be the case, and he owed her $20, what would be the case if she didn't say anything? So if we're supposed to say that it, we're Havi Kiddushin, then Yisni Mekudashasli. Then just say, if he gives her the money, she's Mikudeshes. And if she says no, she's not. Because the stone case would be Mikudeshes. 
Ki Hosam, like it said earlier, when it just said Mikudeshes, you have that earlier break. Ella Ratsta the Amr in. It must be that she has to actively say yes. Lo Ratsta to Ishtika, but if she's silent, it doesn't work. So he's reading this bright time. Um, that that if he if he owes her twenty bucks and says here's the twenty bucks I'm going to at Lee and she's silent it doesn't work she has to actively say yes because if she's silent she's just taking the money because he owes her twenty bucks okay and he's so, he, 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 he's saying the twenty bucks I owe you and that's just here's twenty bucks but he says oh well that's a good point is it just that he, the fact is he owes her he says I'm going to with the twenty dollars that I owe you that's what happens um, yeah you. it sounds like he's just saying with the twenty dollars but it's a good question. The katani de ena mikudeshes, so it doesn't work. Now, my time. Now, why? Yecholu lemeimer ink shakli v'didir shakli, for the same reason. Now, that case is even more ambiguous because, as opposed to chap, you know, stealing something in the marketplace and giving it back. If I owe you twenty bucks, I could pay it up at any time. I don't have to be paying it up now, right? So now I could be lending, giving you the money in a different context. I'm still going to owe you the twenty dollars, and here's this for whatever reason, right? So. And so that's like a so if we where the read of the bright is correct that in a case where he owes her twenty dollars and he gives her twenty dollars as a rabbi kudesha and she's silent it doesn't work that's because she can say I'm just taking my debt back and that's a big chiddush because that debt doesn't have to be being paid now so certainly why don't we say that in the case of gezel right if we can say it in the case of a debt we should certainly say it in the case of gezel that it so doesn't work that it doesn't work so um so how can we explain the case of gezel that it doesn't work there must be a basis of this okay, someone else is gezel. Okay. no one of the cases was her own it matters if there was a engagement period ahead of time then we'll say that the silence even when it's her own thing that was taken out of her hand is being mochel and accepting it as kesef kiddushin but if it was at the moment and that money is coming to her anyway because it was stolen or it was a debt or anything of that nature then silence is not interpreted as kesef as, as agreement it's just it's just a way of getting her object back Okay, so we now have basically two statements. One is money was given, his money was given to her, but it was not done in the context of Kiddushan, or she didn't realize the money was given to her. And then he says, Do we interpret the silence of not throwing it and rejecting it as an acceptance? That's one question. So that's Shikalach and Matt Mos. The other question about silence is that he, at the time when it's being given, back, given he says, but he's giving her something that anyway he owes her. It's a debt. He owes her twenty. He owes her this money because he borrowed it, or it's something stolen. In the more obvious case, in those cases, we also say silence is not interpreted as acceptance because she's just getting her thing back. The exception would be if there was clearly a context of kedusha. They had been having an engagement period prior. Then we would say, in that case, the silence would be an acceptance. It would have been more compelling to me if the shadik case would also have been in the case of a debt not a separate situation, right? Like they use the Geneva case to contextualize Shadduchim. Yeah. But the debt case they use just to learn the principle yeah, of the assumption. It would be, it would, it would be like a Kabbalah there. The debt case is the one that more you're more inclined to say works. <laughs> so certainly if there was a situation of Shadduch by the debt, it would also work. Yeah. Okay, so the Mariah says like this. He not now to Ravasi. Now when Ravasi was dying, or died, excuse me, I the Rabbanon in Kutina Hulishmatite. The rabbis gather to literally to grab on to his teachings. They basically got everybody together and said, you know, while it's still fresh in our memories, let's probably record all of the teachings we know of Ravasi that we had you know that we don't have sort of recorded yet, so we don't forget them. So Amalei Humer Abanan, so one of the rabbis, Rav Yaakov Shimei, and his name was Rav Yaakov, says, Hagi Amar Ravasi, I'm a Rav Mani. So it's interesting because some of the things, a lot of the things that they're teaching is not his own original teachings, his traditions, the Shmai today. Anyway, here's what Ravasi says in the name of Ravmani. The same way a woman is not less than a Pruta, Kachin Karka Niknik Pachs Mishvei Pruta. Also Karka is not. Tosas points out the irony that you're learning Karka from Isha since we normally go the reverse. Okay, but anyway, he says it might just be a comparison. We're not really learning it out. But Karka also doesn't work, work less than a Pruta. What do you mean we got a bright that says actually Karka does work less than work less than a Pruta? That doesn't work as Kesef. If you want to buy the Karka as Kesef, it has to be a Pruta. 
You can buy karka with less than a pruta if you do an act of chalipa, like a king and suda. I mean, like okay. even suda, it's worth less than a pruta. Right, but as long as it's a kli, okay, and that's how chalipa goes. The time you're calling the kli, you have a piece pruta. Okay, although it still is interesting because you can buy karka with chalipa and then isha with chalipa. That's an early year sugi. All right, so that's one teaching. How do you think you can come? You have to now, then they had this was going to be another teaching in the name of Ravasi. You know, that statement this of Rabbi Yehud What? I, we're starting there. We're going to get to Ravasi's teaching. That statement of Rabbi Yehud that says, Koshen Yodev, if you get in the Kiddush, go ye Esek Mahem, that if you don't know what you're doing by getting the Kiddush, you should stay far away from them because you're just going to keep, turn people into Mamzerim, etc. So, Amar Ravasi, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. So, on that statement, here's the Ravasi. Ravasi said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, the Koshen Yodev, Yosem Yodor Hamabu. So, and if you get involved in things like that and you shouldn't be involved, it's going to be worse, worse to the world, worse to the world, worse to the world than worse. the generation, I know, than the generation of the model. So it's interesting. One of the things they're remembering in his name, it's still important to record, is sort of his Agadic teachings as well, like his Musr teachings. One minute, Shenema, so uh, swearing and, deni- and denying murder and, and burglary, the Naof and, and uh, adultery, Pirtu, they sort of burst forth. Bedamim, bedamim, nagaru. Blood touched blood. So my mashma, where do you see what you know? What the context here is for us? To the Metargum Rav Yosef, as Rav Yosef interprets, molding this damim, bedamim mean molding benim minishei chavreon. If it's adultery, so they give birth to children from their you know from their neighbors' wives, and chovin achovin mosifin, and that adds iniquity upon iniquity. Now, how do you still see that's worse than Dora Mabu? Because obviously the point is that if you pass it incorrectly, it's going to lead to cases of adultery. Well, this is okay. neos, right? Neos, because neos is there, right? So damim be damim. Now, how do you see it's worse than dora mabul? See, but it says, and the totally arcain teavel aretz. Therefore, the land will will mourn. Umlal kol yosheva, and all those who dwell in it will be bereaved. Okay, bechayat asadel ba'ova shemayim v'gam the geyayam yeyasafu. Even the fish of the ocean. Okay, the ilu dora mabul. But in the model, the fish got out, we were saved. So you see that when things lead to this, it's worse than the model, it leads disaster on the entire world. The Ema Adabi Lukulu, a minute, maybe it's only if you did all of those sins, not just one of them. So that doesn't make sense. To see, Kimipne Allah. Because of swearing false oaths, the land is mourned. And that's the, so that's the difference of the list. But that's one of the things of the list. So you see, any one of them is the basis for this. So therefore, also this thing about adultery. The Gemara says, the Allah Well, maybe Allah is enough by itself, and everything else, you need the entire list to have this consequence. The Gemara says, no. It doesn't say, and it burst forth. And Rashi says the part two is like, from I think Rashi quotes the part was Bnei Israel, the Kani Froats, which means again, like you know, about like having children, right? Bnei Israel part, you know, what is it? What's the part two? Is it part two? Sure, yeah, no, Kani Bebe Kani Froats. Haru Bnei Israel. That's not part two. That's what Rashi says. Kani Froats. Okay. Anyway, so Mix so says it makes the U part two part two. The list has the vugs connecting it. I love it. Kitchesh Ratzoch Leganov Naov. And then it says part two, dami dami nagar. So just that sin of you know having children as a result of of um, of, of uh, what do you call it of adultery, even unwitting adultery, that itself is enough to bring all this about. And therefore, if you're not don't know what you're passing, it's all on you. Yes. Hosea, from where some of the verses were, yeah. had a wife who committed adultery and had children by the other man. Oh, that's a very mm-hmm. interesting point. Okay, how do you the comedy? So that was so now they had another teaching in his name. If a woman brings her chatas, a woman who uh, has to bring a chatas in an ola because she had cha- she, she gave birth, <laughs> so she brings her daughter chatas and then she dies. <coughs> the heirs are still allowed to bring her ola. Okay, yeah, she can't bring because a chatas, you can't bring a chatas if the owners are dead, but you can bring an ola from somebody who's already dead. I'm a rabbi and I'm a shmuel. Who he she some so they're, they're only obligated to do it, meaning there's a question of allowed or obligated. They're only obligated to do it if she had already sanctified the animal, designated it while she was still alive. But if he's dead, she died before she sanctified the animal, they have no obligation 
to satisfy it. Now, this is going to be treated as always interesting how you look at Korbanot, but there's definitely a Gemara that looks at Korbanot that the, it, <coughs> it, 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 it can look at the obligation of Korbanot not just as a religious obligation, but as a debt to the base of Mikdash. Um, uh, and at the base of Mikdash has a monetary claim on your property for your debt of sacrifices. So that's the question. Are the heirs obligated to pay off their mother's debt of the Ola? Okay, you're allowed to bring an Ola for this for that person, but are they obligated? If you already sanctified it, it already belongs to the base of Mikdash. But if you didn't sanctify it, are the heirs obligated to pay off this debt? What does it mean if she didn't sanctify it? What does it mean Hevia and then Neta? Hevia means that she she offered it up. She brought it as a korban. You have you have your, your you, you sanctify the animal, then you bring it as a korban. It okay. gets slaughtered and brought. So the chatos was already brought and offered up on the mizbeach, and the ola she sanctified and didn't bring, and then she ah, died. Ah, 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 okay, she did one but not the other. Exactly. Okay. So alma so now so but if he didn't sanctify it, then the heirs have no responsibility to pay up this debt to the base of mikdash. Alma kasover shibuda lav yoraisa. Now this is a so this so. So this Mishnah is of the opinion that a Shibu, I'm sorry, Rabbi Yudha Mershmuel is of the opinion that a Shibu is not in a Torah. This is a very important question. We know, right, that if you have a, a debt in a document, there are liens on the property. If the debt is oral, there are no liens. The question is, right, like, is the assumption that any type of debt that you own, you incur liens on your property, and therefore, if the person dies, the heirs would have to pay it off, and he sells the property to be collected. But for some reason, an unwritten debt is an exception. One reason it could be an exception would be that it's not fair to the people who are purchasing the property, right? But we have to protect other people and so on. But the fundamental principle is that everything has liens. Or is the fundamental principle that no debts that you have have liens? The one exception is when you write it in a star, because that is seen as granting the person <coughs> rights and liens and so on. So this is the question whether she Buddhist still writes it. Now, an interesting test case is, why do you have to say there's a general rule? There's with a shard, there isn't without there is. No, because there are cases that's not about a debt that's because you took a loan. I, I banged into your car. I owe you $100. Do you have liens on my property? Right? So I didn't, you know, the obligation came not through some conscious entering into that. That got imposed on me. Does that come with debts or not debts? Or with liens or not liens? So if you say Shibuta de Raisa, it means fundamentally any oblig obligation you have to somebody else, that person has liens on your property. Okay? With Nafkamina for heirs and for and for people who purchase your property. Shibuta Lav de Raisa means fundamentally there are no liens. And the case of a like of a Malva with a star, that's the exception. Okay, so here it was it, there was an obligation that was imposed by the Torah to bring an Ola, and it says the heirs don't have to pay it up. So you see, Shibuta Lav de Raisa, a standard obligation does not come with liens. Okay? So that's what Rabbi Yudam Shmuel says. Now on that, now we get to Rav Asi's teaching. I'm Rav Asi, I'm Rav Yochanan. Alpha Gav Shalohi Fisha Michai. He disagrees with Rabbi Yudam, with, with Rabbi Yudam Shmuel. But <laughs> even if she didn't sanctify the Ola from life, uh, the, 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 the uh, heirs have to give it. Alma Kasavar, Shibuta Havi de Raisa, that from the Torah, Debts incur automatically leave. Maybe just for Korbanot, though. Could say, so let's see what the Gemara says. The Hapligi Bacharazim. One minute. We already know that the bait, because it's the bait essentially, because the or, or the original teachers of the tradition are Shmuel and Rabbi Yochanan. Right? It was Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Shmuel and Rabbi Asi in the name of Rabbi Yochanan. But, so we already know that the bait between Shmuel and Rabbi Yochanan. It's Rabbi Shmuel, the Rabbi Shavai. Rabbi Shmuel would say, Malva al peh ain't a goin' min a yorshim below min that an oral debt does not, you know, if there's not written, then uh, there are no liens, and you cannot collect it from the heirs or from the uh, per or or from you know the other people who buy it. Rabbi Yonah Reish Lakish, I'm to buy. It's interesting. It's above the Israel distinction also. Rabbi Yonah Reish Lakish both say Malva Pes Dover Min Yarshin Milukos. Actually, if even if it's just a verbal, you know, a, a loan, and there's nothing written down, you actually can collect it from heirs and from purchasers, and that seems to be the question of. It does everything have liens or not have liens? So it says no. Srikha. You need to say the debate in both places because, as Michael pointed out, there could be a logical difference. Dietmar Baha, if it was just in the case about, let's say, the Korban, I would say, Bahach Kamar Shmuel, Mishum, that's where Shmuel says that there is, that it's, um, one minute, one, no, one minute, wait, 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 what's the first Baha? One minute, oh, let me just check. Um, Ha, <laughs> ha,
Yeah, I'm sorry. No, the Baha is the second case. If we just said Baha, the case that we just said when you borrowed money, so and Shmuel orally. said what? Orally. Just, what? Pet. Orally. orally, right? If we had just said that case, and Shmuel says that there are no liens, so Baha come Shmuel. We shum below mil baksu of authority because the Torah never imposes that obligation on you. That's an obligation that you entered as a you know freely with another person. So that's not a weighty obligation. It's not the Torah is telling you, yes, once you borrow money, you have to pay. But it's not the whole debt was imposed by the Torah. The debt was assumed by you personally. So in that case, maybe it doesn't have the same weight of a Bahach, but in the case of a Korban, Michael wanted to say based on Mikdash, but the Torah and the Gemara say just the fact that the Torah imposes the obligation, maybe he agrees that there are Shibudim. And if we have just said the case of the Korban, that's where Rabbi Yochanan says that it is does have liens. Because the Torah imposes it. Okay? But in the case of, what do you call it, of the of a debt, of borrowing money, excuse me, maybe the Yiddish that that's not so weighty, that's not imposed by the Torah. So you need to say in both cases. Now, the way we deal with that, we basically say that it's... Um, why is it exist in a star and not exist by Alpac? Because that's basically what we paskin, right? That doesn't really by itself make it clear whether we say Shibuta is Doraisa or Lav Doraisa. Mm-hmm. We can say Shibuta is Doraisa, but we but we but it doesn't exist by Alpac in order to protect the Lukuchos, right? Of course, if that were true, then you would expect that who would have to pay, who you who would you still be able to collect from? Your mm-hmm. you don't have to, we have to protect the Kuchos. If they're innocent, they're giving out money to get the stuff, they need to be protected. So that would be like the test nafka in the case, okay? But at least to protect the Yorshim. The other way is to say is Shibuta's love Doraisa, but if you write a star, we read into the idea that you're recording it in a star as an implicit granting the person rights, you know, <coughs> liens on the property. Okay, so there's different ways of understanding how the mice would be possible. It's a fantastic it. conceptualization that the Torah is a star hole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's true. That's a good way to put it. Right. Principle. Right. Even more than a star hole, right. that's imposed the Torah on you. Right. Torah itself is conceptually a star hole. That's a good point. Yep. Okay. Amr Papa, Hil Chazav, Alocha is, Mal the Alped, Gover Mini Yorshim. The ain't a gover mina lukuchos. So as we said, you can collect it from the yorshim and not lukuchos. So the yorshim, that's the test case. Gover mina yorshim. If the fault is then even if it's all oral, yeah, there's the right. Shibuta is the araisa. The ain't a gover mina lukuchos. You can't collect from the lukuchos. The lace lakala because since there's no, it's not known that you borrowed the money. We have to protect the innocent lukuchos. So that's the case. It doesn't work. I'll pat mina lukuchos. But Alpha Mino Yarshim, you have liens, and that's because Shibuta is still right. Which means okay. sort of like a behef could be in is that what it's basically getting at? Yeah, essentially. Or yeah, right, or that all monetary transactions are implicitly with the rule that we set down, which is not exactly the same as Hefker Basin. Let's just try to get to start the next so yeah. The Konis Atma get him means it's about finally now. Look at that. We're making good progress. We did Kesef Sharm Bia. We had a couple of real life scenarios of Sudushe Kesef, right? Did we have a Zakruta? Right, did we have silence is implicit acceptance or not in some cases? Now we get to the fact now that now we went from having a view to having a husband die. Exactly. In. There you go. <laughs> the Shlema get, I get that a get she becomes no longer married. The see, um, the head of the we do. Ella Misa Sabal, but the husband's death, we know one. So it's such a great question. Yeah. How do you know? Where does it ever say that just because the husband dies? He's not married. He's not married. married. He's not married. So the mother says, Swaru, it's logic. Who are Srub? Who Shar? Who Sharsa? Sharsa. He was the one that made her forbidden. Because she was married to him, so when he dies, he makes things permissible. So says, no, we can't say that. Not, not necessarily true. The Arayus, the Asuluhu, below Sharilahu. Sometimes, right through marriage, somebody becomes forbidden to you, right? Your, you know, you know, uh, your father's wife, right? And then you know, the father dies. The woman still remains forbidden to you. So the status remains of the of the Arayus, right? Uh, by many of the Arayas, even after de- even the death of the of the, which was only forbidden to you because she married your father, right? But nevertheless, even after your father dies and he's out of the picture, she doesn't go back. Her status remains. You want to know why death is stronger than Arayas? Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the low Charlu Ella. Here's here's where we're going to prove it. Amar Rachmana Yevama She'ein Labani Masura. That a sister-in-law, when there's no children, she's forbidden to the brother-in-law. I'm sorry, she's forbidden to anyway, asura to everybody else. Right. 
yeah. with that when she doesn't have children, right? She's also to everybody else because she because of the myths of Hebrew to the mother-in-law. Hayesh Laban implicitly, if she had kids mm-hmm. and had no obligation, and there was no obligation of Yibum, Mutaris, she'd be permissible to everybody else. But says, no, maybe I'll say the Dilma, ain't Laban, if there are no kids, a surah is forbidden to everybody else, the Sharia Liyava, and she's okay for the brother in law. Yesh Laban, maybe if she has kids, maybe the Chuyama Nami Asura, maybe she's also to everybody, which is so obviously ironic, right? But okay, she's, but anyway. All right, how do you know? It doesn't tell you she's permissible in the other case, maybe she's forbidden. Ella, let's try one more for that. You know, Amar Rahman, Almana le coin gadol asura. This is probably the yeah, example. Nice. If a widow is forbidden to a coin gadol, how a coin head you sharia for a normal coin and for the rest of the world, it's she's permissible. But no, the deal with a coin gadol belav, maybe with a coin gadol, she's usher with a lotase, and the chuyama base. And everybody else, maybe there's an Isra say for her to marry. Now, where's the Isra say coming from or whatever? We'll pick up with this tomorrow. But uh-huh. we're picking up tomorrow, we're going to try to figure out how you know that even after the husband died, maybe that she, no, how you'll know that after the husband died, she's permissible. Okay, so we will pick up with this tomorrow. I mean, how serious is it? They really, can't, they really would think that like, women whose husband dies can't marry anyone else ever? No, but they, they obviously know what the answer is. Their question is just how can you, where do you, how can you prove it? I mean, nobody's really doubting the, the fact that that's the halacha. The question is, what is our basis for knowing that? Uh, oh, that's a good point. Yeah.